Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo, and I'm doing this broadcast tonight in front of our Christmas tree, and I just love it. And I wish I could show it to you from top to bottom. Maybe I could just let you see. Whoa, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty high up there. But in any event, I just, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be with you tonight, and I just wanted to uh, do something a little bit different tonight and to do the broadcast in front of the Christmas tree. And my cockatiel is not too far off from me, so I hope he will be quiet and not noisy. If he starts singing or talking, then, oh well, <laughs> it'll be an added addition to the broadcast. But welcome, welcome. I see you guys jumping on, and ah. Hello from South Africa, awesome. Great to have you here. Hi, Lisa, hi, oh my gosh, it's so wonderful. See, that's the beauty of Facebook Live right now. I will also have this video um, you know, posted to YouTube and I'll convert it uh, to the podcast in iTunes. And this way I'm kind of covering um, you know, the different uh, areas. So hello, hello, welcome, welcome. It's great, great. I see you guys jumping on. So I hope that you have had an awesome week, you know, and I, I don't like to date the broadcast, but the Christmas tree is right in back of me. And I want to make the broadcast tonight just as personal. Well, I always am transparent, but just as personal as can be. And so, um, hi, ha hello. Oh my gosh. I could start saying names, but then we would just keep on going. So I see you guys jumping on and I will go back and read every single comment later. So, and Merry Christmas to you guys too. Oh, it's so great. Wonderful. So I was saying that I hope that you have been having a good week, you know, this week. I hope it's been great for you, um, whatever you're doing, you know, in this Christmas season. And just right off the bat, make sure that you don't write Xmas on anything because what is X? No, it's Christ. It's Christmas. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. I got a text from someone this week and they said something about Xmas and I was like, Arr, you know. So in any event, I had a pretty eventful week. Um, last week, right after the broadcast last Thursday, I got word on Friday that my mother had fallen again and she landed in the ER again. And so Friday afternoon, I had to drive to South Jersey in the rain, in the dark, and I don't really you know, care for, for night driving and it gets dark now about 4.30 here. And so anyway, it took me over two hours to get there. And praise God, there were no broken bones. Um, it was um, a doctor error because she was going for an MRI of the brain, which praise God was negative. Um, but the neurologist who was sending her for the MRI had, um, she's, she gets claustrophobic and she had anxiety around doing a closed MRI. So she was going for an open one. Anyway, long story short, the neurologist had prescribed um, uh, Ativan. It's an anti-anxiety, um, I guess, you know, medication. And and I remember saying to the neurologist, because I was at the appointment, and I said, how is she going to be able to walk, you know, because now they want her walking with a walker, you know, and just a whole nother story. You know, all the, neg all the reports are negative, right? And, but here's the thing. When someone talks negative a lot, or they think negative, or they're depressed, and they don't focus on what they're grateful for and what's good in their lives, and they tend to always be focused on, you know, the negative, I promise you it will affect every cell in your body. And, you know, so she gets mad at me. She's like, listen, I don't believe the way you do. And it's just been, you know what I've said, a lot of persecution. I love my mom. I love her. I love her. I love her. But she's like, I'm Catholic and I don't believe the way you believe. She's like, I keep asking God to do something and he's not doing it. And I ask Mary to do something and she's not doing it. And I'm trying to explain, but mom, Jesus has already done it. And I share this with you, the viewing audience, because you may be dealing with, you know, someone similar in your life, you know, that comes and listen, we respect people, but we still have an obligation to speak truth. So, Anyway, long story short, um, it hasn't been, you know, the greatest week for her. And, but 
What's beautiful is I did spend the night there Friday night. She did come home from the ER because there was, you know, the transportation brought her home though. I, I kind of just jumbled this, but the neurologist recommended this medication and I said to the neurologist, how is she gonna walk with the walker if this medication makes her drowsy? And she said, oh no, it won't make her sleep. It'll just make, you know, calm any anxiety. It knocked her out. She couldn't walk, hence she fell in the driveway trying to get out of the car. I wasn't there and it was just a mess. And I had said to her beforehand, mom, I really wish you wouldn't take this medication before the MRI. Just close your eyes, just, you know, just don't take it because how are you gonna walk afterwards? I'm, I'm really concerned about this. And sure enough, she fell. And so anyway, bottom line is she didn't break anything. She is home, um, but, <sighs> So I tell you all this because the, the topic of tonight's message is resting in the Lord. I had an opportunity to pray over her as she, you know, she fell asleep uh, on Saturday morning before I was leaving. Um, you know, we managed to get her up a little bit and then get her back in the bed and she fell asleep. And then I just ministered healing to her before I left. And as I was driving home, you know, I was just conversing with the Lord the whole entire time. And, you know, but as soon as I walked away, after I ministered healing to her, I walked away. And as I was walking out of her room, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, now just believe and trust me. And I was like, Lord, I believe and I'm going to trust you. And that's all. And I, and I just felt like, I knew it was the Holy Spirit and I, I was just so grateful and I was like, that's it. I'm going to believe and I'm going to trust you and that's it. So anyway, I went home, you know, and, and just, oh, and then to boot, maybe you hear I'm a, I sound a little bit nasally. I started coming down with all these ridiculous cold symptoms. This was all after last week's broadcast. The very next day, I had an opportunity to put all of that into practice, right? And so... I had, you know, for two nights, it was like coughing and, you know, the sinuses and all these cold symptoms. And I was like, no, and I'm coming against it. And I didn't take, you know, listen, we rely on Jesus, but I know that he's given us wonderful things in the natural to keep our physical bodies strong. That's why he told us what to eat, you know, to use um, the leaves for healing. You know, he gives us things. Now, listen, the blood of Jesus cleanses everything. You put your faith in God, and yes, you can absolutely be healed. You will be healed. When you put your faith in God, you will be healed. Now, if you don't have, you know, um, now the Holy Spirit may say to you, do this. He's done that to me before. You know, eat more greens, do this, do that. The Holy Spirit will show you what you need to do to take care of your physical body as well. So, so in any event, Later that day, I, I went food shopping and I remember being in the parking lot, you know, and I started thinking, Lord, is there anything else that I could have done? Is there anything else that I should be doing, you know, in the natural? And I'm thinking, you know, for them, for my mom, for my stepdad and, he, and the Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh, he's so wonderful. And this is what he said to me. He said, you've done what you're supposed to do. You talked with them about me. And I was like, wow, you know something? Above all that you could do for anybody, it's to come in the truth of God's word. Whatever the need is, whatever, you know. Now, if somebody's got a need and you can give and maybe, you know, there's different kinds of needs. If somebody needs, you know, help for, I don't know, whatever, and it's gonna cost a little something and you can help them, then by all means, help them. You know what I mean? It's like, whatever you can do, you know, be careful of people that try to manipulate though. I noticed that, um, and this isn't, you know, to come against anybody, but I noticed in particular this Christmas and on Facebook, there's a lot of people doing fundraisers for things, you know, and so my gosh, if you give to every single thing out there, you know, do as God leads you, you know what I'm saying? And don't ever feel guilty, just do what God tells you to do. Okay, and I think it's beautiful. There's a lot of great causes out there, you know. So in any event, in this broadcast, now I'm kind of, you know, getting to the message, but resting in the Lord. I had another conversation with um, a good friend of mine um, on Monday 
uh, Nadine, if you're watching, you know who you are. I love this girl, Nadine. She's a good friend of mine. But we were talking about s believing, speaking, and then resting. And to rest means you're trusting in God. You're fully confident that what he said or what's in his word, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, you know? And no man looks at the circumstances if he believes for real. You can look at the circumstances, yes, but you don't stay there. If you believe, you believe, you speak God's word on that thing, and then you gaze and you focus your attention on the truth of God's word. Focus your attention on the truth of God's word. And I'm telling you, you've got to labor, right, to enter into rest. What is... Think about it with everything coming at you from the world's, you know, pulling you here, pulling you there, the opinions of man and no, you can't and this and that and the, ba, 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 the doc. Whoa, you gaze your attention and focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith and faith is the victory that overcomes the world. My bird, my bird is starting to chime in. <laughs> hi, baby. <laughs> so in any event, you might hear him say, hi, mom in any event, but it's never going to be to your advantage to rely on human wisdom or human, I shouldn't even call it really wisdom, human opinions, right? People experiment, doctors experiment, and thank God for doctors, you know, and there's many great uh, doctors that have the spirit of God, those are the kind of doctors that you want to see. You know what I mean? And, and I'm just going to throw this out there. For example, um, I, I have um, a friend named Dr. Jockers, Dr. David Jockers. He's a natural health. Um, he is a man of God. You should look him up on Facebook. He's awesome. Dr. Jockers. David Jockers, and he's, he's, I love, you know, even his newsletters, they're fabulous, and they're just so full of God, you know, and, and anyway, so he's got a beautiful family, and I don't know why, I just felt led to put his name out there, so he is, uh, yeah, he's pretty awesome, and I love his newsletters, um, Dr. Axe, you know, he's, he's a Christian as well, and uh, he's got, you know, great information as well, but again, it won't ever be to your advantage, though, to rely, right, solely on the wisdom or the opinions of man. Doctors experiment. God never experiments. I'm just saying, listen, we, we need doctors. They're important, absolutely. But I'm saying don't rely solely on. You need to, if your faith isn't where it needs to be, do everything that you can to build your faith so that you are, and, and the way that you build your faith is hearing the word of God. You've got to feed, oh no, sorry about that. You've got to feed on God's word. You've got to feed on God's word. Feed, feed, feed. Just like physical food for your body, you need the word of God for your spirit. You need it. Christ in you needs to be your all in all. Christ in you, remember, the greater one lives in you and greater is he that is in you that is in the world, right? You can get alone with God amongst any chaos that's going on in your life, in your family, persecution. Just close your eyes, be still, and know that he is God. Mm, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So talk about resting in the Lord, right? Do you know that when you're resting, it's because you're trusting so that word that you believed and spoke and spoke, now when you rest, you trust, it's in motion. It's absolutely in motion. I always talk about that, like a spinning top, like a voo, 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 voo. What you believe and speak, you've released, it's in motion, now rest, which means to trust that it's being done. I tell you, the person who believes has their request. The person who believes, and they've asked according to God's will, listen, how do you have confidence in God? First of all, when you know that you are, you know, and not that it's about works, you're justified by your faith in Jesus, but you also, like I know for me, I want to live a holy life because I want to please my father. Jesus 
pleased his father all the time. He wanted to honor his father. I want to honor my Lord Jesus. He's wonderful. And especially after everything that he's done, I want to honor him with my life, right? I love what Todd White's, uh, I've heard him say before, why would you want to just go sinning and, and, and think, oh, but I'll be forgiven. That's like taking Jesus's, you know, wiping his face in the mud. Why would you ever want to do that to someone who has died and bled and given everything so that you could be victorious and overcome every single thing that the world could throw at you, right? No, you want to live a life that is pleasing and honoring to God. Not because it's about works, it's because your heart is just pure and you love God. You just, you want to honor him because you know how much he loves you. Remember, he loved you first. That's why we can love him. You know, and if you don't know the love of the Father yet, maybe because you didn't have, you know, the greatest earthly example, I didn't either, right? Everybody, most people have a story. And some people are like, but you don't know my story. You know, I got an email from someone uh, last week, and I, I, I apologize, I really have not had a chance to respond to many emails this past week, just with everything that's been going on, but, but I read them. And I just haven't had a chance to respond, but I got this one email and it's a woman who is going through such a negative time in her life. And, and I mean, I could just see in the email that everybody else is the problem except her. And she was saying how she's so enraged with God and she's so mad at God because of, you know, that she can't trust him because of all the things that happened in her life. And you know what? If you're watching this broadcast tonight, you know who you are that wrote that email. Listen, I love you, but I love you just like Jesus does. But I got to tell you the truth. You have a hardened heart toward the Lord. And it's like you can be mad at God, but you can't manipulate God. You can't manipulate him like you can do with people. Sometimes you can say to someone, well, I'm mad at you because you did this. And, that. and they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God's not going to do that because he didn't do anything wrong. He, he gave his son for you. That's how much he loves you. So in any event, um, yeah, don't be mad at the only one that can help you. We've got to make sure, you've got to make sure that your heart is not hardened toward God. Okay? Okay. So remember that your faith, <laughs> having trust and confidence in God is awesome because, again, whatever you believe, and whatever you believe, good or bad, and you speak, that's what you set in motion. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's in your heart the most, that's what you're going to speak. Make sure you're feeding on God's word so that you can get those promises in you, in you, in you. And let the word of God break you. If, you, if your heart has been hardened and you're finding it hard to trust God, then it's because your heart has been hardened by the experiences in the world and the opinions of other people. I'm just saying you've allowed stuff to come in that needs to be broken. And I'm not talking about somebody speaking over you in the name of Jesus, be broken. Listen, you gotta renew your mind. Listen, devils can be cast out, but you gotta renew your mind with God's word. That means you gotta, you gotta feed on God's word so your mind can change and you can be transformed from the inside and then people will see it on the outside. But it only happens by knowing what this word says and deciding I'm going to agree with this and forget, you know, listen, I had to surrender. I had to surrender. I was a train wreck in relationships and oh my goodness. And it was my way or the highway. I was difficult and I had a hard heart, but it came to a point where I was, just, and I was so full of pride, needy, codependent, full of full of wrath, if you will, Rah! you know, mm -mm. no way. That was so wrong. And you know what? When I finally surrendered and I was just like, God, I'm tired of doing it my way. Like I need help. I need help. My heart was broken. Right. And the Lord is always, oh my God, I get emotional. The Lord is always, um, close to a broken heart, right? A broken hearted. He came to bind up the broken hearted to heal your wounds, but you got to surrender and ask him to come in and then get in the word and get around, you know, other believers who really 
have the heart of God. Not those who just say they do, but then they live like the devil. There's people out there that are like that, you know? So when you have confidence in God, that means you're trusting in him. And that means that your shield of faith is up and working for you. Your shield of faith is up, so your faith pulls like gravity and it's working for you automatically. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. When you're at rest, God's power is working. Okay? I don't mean resting like you're sitting there. No, 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 no. I'm talking about you're at rest, you're at peace. You're trusting God, you're confident that it's that what you spoke, what you believe, and you know you have peace, you're, he's in agreement with you and you know that your prayer is being answered. You know, in a moment's time when you believe and you speak, and when you speak the name of Jesus, which all power is in that name, and that name is above every name, and everything that has a name bows to the name of Jesus. In a moment, when you believe and you speak the name of Jesus over a situation, things can change immediately, but then you trust. When doubt and unbelief comes in, nope, I don't receive that. Nope, it will be as I said. Because if you know that you're praying in accordance with God's will, or you're speaking to that mountain that God told you, speak to it, right? Listen, sickness does not glorify God. I don't care what anybody says. If you're sick, God is not, God is not getting glory out of you being sick or out of someone you know being sick. People make excuses when they don't see God results. And it comes from a heart that isn't truly believing. I've had people say to me, well, you know, sister so-and-so died and like she really believed. Okay, were you with her? Could you read her mind every second, her thoughts and her, what was in her heart? You don't know when she was alone, what she may have said to the Lord. You don't know What's in only God knows what's truly in a person's heart. And it's a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law just like gravity that when you truly have faith, your faith pulls like gravity. And I always say it, and you're always going to hear me say this. The woman that had the issue of blood, Jesus didn't decide to heal her. Her faith pulled healing out of him like gravity. And all these other people were pressing up against him She's the one that got healed. He felt power go out of her, out of him, to her. He even turned around. Who touched me? He felt power go out of him. Her faith pulled like gravity. I love that story. I just, I love it. And the Lord showed me that, that faith, true faith is like gravity. When you truly believe and you speak God's word, rest, trust. That's it. Confidence in that word. Put up your shield of faith against anything else that even tries to come to the contrary. Don't consider anything else. Don't consider the report, the bad report, the opinions. La, 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 la. <laughs> I'm just saying, blah, 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 blah. Nope. Don't consider anything else but God's word. Okay? Mm. Okay. He casted out evil spirits with a word and healed all that were sick. I love that. And now he's told his believers to do the same, right? He sent them out two by two. You can read Mark chapter 10. I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 10. And you can read Mark 16, right? The Great Commission. We have to go and do the works that Jesus did. And listen, it's not going to happen overnight. You've got to feed on God's word so you can build your faith and let the Holy Spirit have his perfect work in you so that he can, you know, listen, when you're, when you're born again, you've asked Jesus to come in, be the Lord of your life. Holy Spirit comes in, recreates your spirit, but now you have to get your mind in line with the word because your spirit is now, you know, in line with God, but now you got to get your, your mind in line with God. And then your heart and your mind won't be at conflict, you know, in, conflicted all the time. Okay. So what we got to do is we got to devote, make a decision to devote yourself to trusting God's word. Don't be moved by feelings. Don't be moved by what you see in the physical. I want to say this. 
If you minister healing to a person, get your eyes off of the person with the sickness and get your eyes on Jesus as the healer through you touching that person. Get your eyes on Jesus, get your attention and your eyes off of the person and their sickness. Get your eyes on Jesus because he lives in you, right? Christ in you wants to work through you to touch that person and get them healed. But a person is not going to get healed if you're focused on their sickness and like, oh God, come on, like you gotta do something. Oh Lord, Jesus never operated that way. He spoke to the sickness. He spoke to the devil out in Jesus' name, right? Well, well, he didn't have to say in Jesus' name because he was Jesus, but I'm just saying. You're there representing Jesus. Even the apostles didn't always say in Jesus' name, but listen, use the name of Jesus. It's the most powerful name in all the, in all the universe. But even as a son, as a daughter of the Most High God, you've got Christ in you, just go and represent him. Out, come out in Jesus' name. I've done that. Spirits leave. Those evils, unclean spirits, they gotta go in Jesus' name. They go. You're there representing Jesus. Mm. Okay, so you want to minister healing though from the place, from the place of victory, knowing that the victorious one lives in you. The one who overcame death, hell, the grave, who took the keys from Satan, who now all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him and he lives in you. You have authority. He gave it to you. Luke 10, 19. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just very passionate. Ugh. Right? So this is what, this is what you need to do. Okay? There's a faith of rest with, you know, when you have confidence in God. It's, it's, there's a faith that rests in confidence in God. Okay? And confidence comes, again, from a relationship with God and from, you know, living a life that's pleasing to him. And again, it's not about your works because it's never about what you do. It's about what Jesus has done. You're made right by God, with God, by your faith in Jesus, not by your works, okay? You're made right by your faith in Jesus. That's what makes you right with God, not by whether you're good or bad or whatever. But when you love God, you wanna honor him and you wanna set yourself apart and live a life that's holy and pleasing. And let me tell you something. If the spirit of God is living in you and you're renewing your mind with God's word, you're not going to want to do the things that you did before you were a believer, before you were born again. Those things will turn you off. There, you will find that there are TV shows that you just can't even look at anymore. There are songs that you just can't hear. Listen, I'm not talking about, you know, I love like... I don't know, Bee Gees and dance songs from the 80s and the, the groove and all this stuff. But I'm talking about stuff with crazy, you know, explicit and you know, God, you know what I'm talking about. And I don't let anybody tell me what I should be watching or what I should be um, listening to. Listen, I live by the spirit of God and I don't let anybody tell me what I need to be doing really in any area of my life except the Lord, Right. And me and my husband, we're on the same page. We're good. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're, we're good. Let the Holy Spirit tell you what you need to be doing, not the opinions of man, okay? And if you've really got the Spirit of God, you're going to have peace when it's, when it's cool with God. You, I think you guys know what I mean. And we're just about out of time. But I just want to say, you know, talk to God in your daily lives. Talk to him throughout your day. Don't ever let the devil make you feel like, well, you didn't pray for two days. Listen, I talk to God all day long. There's times I can't pick up my Bible in a day or something, you know. I never feel guilty about it because I'm in communion talking with God all day long, even between activities. Or, you know, talk to God when you're driving. Oh, that's a big one for me. Driving, in the shower, at breakfast, like just in your daily activities. Oh, Lord, thank you that you're with me. Thank you, Lord, that you're talking to God. This is beautiful. Don't let people give you any kind of a complex, okay? You and God. All right. And I just want to say this one scripture. You know, while Jesus was at Lazarus's grave, we are like out of time. But while he was at Lazarus's grave, he said that the Father always hears him. 
right? So he knew that because the father always heard him, Lazarus had to come forth when he spoke it. There's a scripture in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, I'm going to conclude with this, that says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us, talking about the father. It says, and if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. Rest in that. Be confident in the promises of God. Kathy said, he walks with me and talks with me. Me too. Praise the Lord. Does he walk with you and talk with you? Right? If you have the spirit of God in you, he absolutely does. Make sure you're paying attention. Right? And if you don't know if it's God, it could be because you haven't renewed your mind with God's word. Because if you're reading on the word, you're going to know what he says. So with that, um, we are out of time for tonight. But if this has been a blessing, make sure you share it on your social media. I love you. God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas. And, um, and I will see you again really soon. All right. God bless you and have a wonderful night. Okay. Bye now.